Stand by. Hafenay, everyone, and welcome to Startup Week in Guam 3. <laughs> Startup Week in Guam has come a long way since we brought it here to Guam in 2014. First of all, we would like to thank our generous sponsors for this event. The Dunk Moon and Suzos Maasi, to our platinum sponsors, the stations of KUAM, the University of Guam, Bank of Guam, and Dreamstorm Productions. We also have to give a huge thank you uh, to Moses Joint, Pyology, uh, Picas Cafe, Pokey Fry, Payless Markets Incorporated, Mighty Purple Cafe, Pacific Island Money Pop, Jamaican Grill, and Gabriel's Restaurant for donating the food throughout the entire weekend. I also wanted to give a special thanks to Master Random, the Guamania Magazine, the Guam Chamber of Commerce, Tropical Productions, Uno Magazine, IT&E, Black Pug Creative, America's SBDC, JR Stoin, MCB, Hotel Nico, National Office Supply, Affiliated Lifestyles, Promotion Specialty, and Global Recycling, Global Recycling for all the support you've given for the participants as well as the organizers. This event would not have been possible without the help of each and every one of you guys. Right, a little background about Startup Weekend. Um, it's a global event under the Tech Stars group, it's a, which is actually an international startup accelerator powered by Google for entrepreneurs. We brought it here to Guam to introduce it to our community <coughs> full of talented, passionate, aspiring entrepreneurs. Whether you have a business background or not, or you just have an idea that you feel can change the world, we wanted this event to be a place where you can come to learn a new skill, to meet like-minded people, or just to grow as an individual, as an individual. So we found out that it was a success for everyone that was involved, uh, sparking so much uh, innovation and intriguing conversations about ideas, creative thinking, and motivation uh, to reach the goals of the initial startup stages in just one weekend. Uh, we kicked it off. We kicked it off the third annual Startup Weekend Guam on Friday with a group of amazing people. We had 13 pitches, and out of those 13 pitches, we chose the top five ideas based on popular vote. All right, and then Saturday came, and the teams hustled and bustled their way from morning until night. We had some of the community's movers and shakers come in to coach our teams, and they provided their advice through their business experience. I want to give a huge shout out to all the mentors who came yesterday. Yeah. Woo! And now we're here. I want to congratulate each and every one of you guys. Your hard work, your dedication, and your perseverance has been super inspiring to us all. And you are true testaments of if you have an idea and you believe in it, you can achieve it just by doing it. It takes courage and persistence to make something happen, to make your ideas happen, <coughs> to put yourself out there, and to make a difference in the world. We are surrounded, so look around you. We're surrounded by works of innovators, creators, doers, and this event is a reminder that you can do anything you put your mind to. You can be a creator and an innovator, and you are. So no matter what the outcome is tonight, you guys are all winners. You're winners because you stuck out this weekend, you stuck this weekend through, and you worked hard, and you did great things. So don't stop innovating, don't stop working towards your dreams. Don't stop doing. So without further ado, we'd like to introduce you guys tonight, uh, tonight's judges. So first off, we have Edward J. Calvo. Happy day, Edward J. Calvo. So he's our first judge. Um, since assuming his role with Tropical Productions, Calvo has produced almost 100 major music concerts and festivals, sporting events, including 33 PXC shows and over 12 successful comedy shows. His work to expand the company internationally has resulted in 15 major events in Manila and the Tropical Productions recently was appointed to manage marketing for Guam Visitors Bureau in the Philippines. He established the top selling magazines in the region with Uno and the Guamanian Magazine. Calvo has also expanded the product portfolio and increased market share for brands imported by Island Wines and Spirits and Midcat distributors, including Heineken, Miller Lite, Monster Energy Patron, and Johnny Walker. He also serves as chairman of the Board of Guam Economic Development Authority, 
managing economic growth initiatives and projects, including the development of the Guam Museum and Farmers Co-op Facility. Lastly, Cavo continues to dedicate himself to Guam's national men's basketball team, the, uh, the top of the FIBA Pacific ranking and helping develop a new training center for all ages opening in 2017. Thank you, Ever J. Calvert, for being here, EJ Calvo. Um, next. We have uh, Nestor Lecanto. Okay. Nestor Lecanto is the editor in chief for the New Guamanian magazine. He's also a contributing reporter for KUAM News <coughs> and the writer and producer for the weekly Business Matters segment. He is a veteran journalist. He began his career at KUAM, where he worked from 1983 to 1994. He went on to become a producer for CNBC Business News at their Asian headquarters in Singapore. Nestor returned to Guam in 2003 and joined TSA, where he worked for more than 11 years, managing internal and external communications and state, uh, stakeholder relations. Nestor attended the University of Hawaii and the University of Guam and holds a BA in communication. Thank you, Nestor. Uh, we also have uh, Lourdes Lu Leon Guerrero. Ms. Lu Leon Guerrero is the president and chair of the board of Bank of Guam. She took over the, the realm of the bank in 2006 after 10 years as a senator in the Guam legislature. Before her political career, she was a nurse and worked for Guam Memorial Hospital and FHP. As a senator, she was instrumental in moving forward legislation that improved the health delivery services <coughs> of our island and was an advocate for improving the quality of health for our island people. Her most recent significant law is the passage of the Natasha Act, which bans smoking in restaurants and bars. Thank you very much, by the way. As president of the Bank of Guam, she has led the institution to become a billion to become a billion dollar financial institution and has expanded the network of branches to now having a presence in every Micronesian sovereign island states. She is a graduate of the Pacific Coast Banking School, a master level graduate program for bankers. She was active in the formation of the <coughs> first Guam Women's Chamber of Commerce. She is a founding member and was the first president of the board. Under her leadership and the board, GWCC now offers health insurance coverage for its members has offered numerous leadership training works towards pay equity for women and is active in providing educational scholarship opportunities for women around the island. Thank you, Lou. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have our next judge, Carlos Camacho, and he is the executive director of Marconesia Self-Help Housing Corporation and the partner in Progressive Pies LLC, Pacific Pancakes LLC, Apple Pacific LLC and Iron Bridge Housing Partners. He is very experienced in the real, real estate industry, serving as a mortgage broker and finance and management consultant. He served as the 11th Guam Youth Congress Vice Chairman of Tourism Committee. He also served as a task force member at the Guam Economic Development Authority and was appointed as a board member in the Haganya Redevelopment Authority Board. He's won several awards, including the Award of Accomplishment in initiating the Guaranteed Rural, Rural Housing Loan Program for Guam under the Rural Development Hawaii State Office. Thank you, Carlos Camacho, for being here. And last, but certainly not least, Derek Munya Kanata. So Derek Munya Kanata is the president of both Autospot, Buick, GMC, and Mitsubishi, <laughs> Guam's fastest growing car dealership, as well as Sixth rent car an internationally reputed premium car rental franchise. Derek has been named to the island's top 40 under 40 in 2015 and 2016 by Guam Business Magazine, and his companies have been featured as Guam's top 50 businesses of 2014 and 2015, respectively. An avid golfer from a young age, he launched the Buick Open Golf Tournament this year to raise funds to benefit Guam Cancer Care and the Guam National Guard's annual banquet for its enlisted soldiers and airmen. He is a member of the Pink Ball organization that also raises funds for Guam Cancer Care. He is a graduate of the George Washington High School and the University of Guam. <laughs> no guess. He has been featured in many local publications for his innovative approach to business and his proficient use of digital media to shake up the local automobile industry. On the rare occasion that he has free time, Derek enjoys piloting airplanes, attending live sporting events, and traveling. He is married and has four wonderful children. Thank you, Derek. So now uh, we're gonna go over how the pitching is going to work. So each team has to uh, has five minutes to pitch their idea, followed by questions and answers of three minutes. We're gonna be pretty prompt on time, so once the five minute mark starts uh, ends, we're gonna start clapping and that'll be your cue to stop presenting. 
as well as when we do the questions and answers, once we start clapping, that'll be your cue to stop asking or answering questions. So this is the order of tonight's presentations. The first will be up will be Guam Bot. Second will be Serial Killers. Three will be Beauty Bar. Four will be The Trampoline. And five will be Let's Do. Okay, whenever you guys are ready, let's <coughs> have the Guam Box come up, please. And prepare your questions. What you have before you is a, um, it's a prototype, and we chose to go with priority mail due to, uh, out of uh, concerns for shipping costs. Uh, what happens is this, it's a product that's delivered, and when the recipient opens it, it's like Christmas in whatever month that they receive it. It's just this little box of happiness, single serving, you know, we don't give them a whole box, a whole shipment of Guzuria or a whole shipment of asparagus biscuits or whatever it is they happen to love that's from Guam that they cannot find where they're at currently. And for that brief moment, they open the box and they're not in their dorm room or they're not in Afghanistan. For that moment, they are transported back in time to when they're six years old in their nana's house eating guzuria. And, you know, it gives them that sense of happiness. 
on the inside the box, you would have like a, a little card with a recipe for a known Guam uh, dish, a local dish. On the back would have a QR code uh, and a link to a video showing you how to make that dish. We send most of the non-perishable ingredients required for that. And every box, every different month would be themed. Uh, upon sign up, we do ask some questions. It's just a few questions, less than 10 questions, just to kind of gauge what the recipient wants. And the purpose for this is to, to help the people who are out there pursuing these military endeavors. And a portion of every subscription goes back to the community, goes back to various uh, you know, charitable organizations, beginning with the military. And then as we progress, <coughs> we'll add on charities, uh, charitable companies. We would also like to have a scholarship fund um, created. And that's pretty much it. The Guam Box. We are the ambassadors of the holiday spirit. And we are sending single serving happiness monthly. So thank you. Alright. Yeah, so I can hear your question. You don't I'll bring it down. Yeah. I just want to say it's an amazing yeah. idea. Oh, for sure. I was uh, in college not too long ago and um, receiving one of those boxes is probably one of the things that kept me going. Um, you get gazuria, you get pantosta, you get um, uh, cheese curls. <laughs> but um, it did definitely remind us about Kiao and being so far away from home. I think it was an amazing idea. And I um, look forward to, to seeing it in production. Um, how, how much is your oh, monthly yeah. subscription? And um, what do you expect your revenues to be, say, in a year? The monthly subscription, uh, we've compiled a way, uh, it's a loose structure that we're working on because cost was something we did not fully consider, but the uh, it's we're trying to keep it minimal. We're looking at uh, about under $30 for the basic box, and then as we grow, we will have premium boxes. <coughs> we can even have repeat boxes um, buying in bulk, but the idea is it's a subscription box, and it's, it's not meant to send you an entire package or a whole shipment of spam or anything. It's really just a themed box that for this month, you know, this is your experience. We're shipping experiences the holiday spirit. Um, you mentioned targeted uh, demographics, <coughs> military college students. <coughs> As you know, Guam is a very diverse demographic, so if your box could include the diversification, because some of our, uh, other than our local indigenous population that love the other local food, uh, even though they may be Filipino, Korean, whatever, they call Guam home. The holiday spirit is really, really good. But I think you should also expand other than college and the military. We got a lot of huge uh, migration of different people in the United States that will have when they have access to rem remind them of their home. Yes. So just to increase your your cash flow basis. The original idea was uh, before I said ambassadors of holiday spirit. Uh, it just for the transplanted tomorrow. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, not so much. The transplanted Guamanian and Guamanian at heart. People who are either from here and left or people who um, served here during the military, uh, you know, went to their four years or whatnot, and then they left and they fell in love with the island. This is for anybody. Uh, of course, we would kind of cater it because that's all I really know. But then as it grows, I would love to just diversify because, you know, Guam is a melting pot of, of diverse cultures. Yeah, I yeah. yeah I, I'm not sure if you're supposed to be going into uh, more of the business model, but. Uh, besides your revenue projections, uh, are you purchasing these goods wholesale? Are you going to be uh, purchasing them in stores? And then what will your markup be? How would you create consistency <coughs> so that a subscriber would know that each and every time I get a box, it's going to be uh, uh, at a certain value? And, and I think that needed to be thought through a little bit more um, in order to sell and make sure that there's a, a profit margin to be able to continue your business. Okay, so, um, so uh, as far as... Uh the box itself is about fifteen dollars to ship, and then um, uh, all together with that, uh, we're planning to put in fifteen dollars worth of items in uh, wholesale. And uh, we need to sell it for more than thirty. Then, so pretty much, our, our our subscription is going to be about forty dollars. We make ten dollars off of everything. Uh, we did a uh, uh, we're starting off with a hundred boxes, one hundred fifty boxes that we plan to use to sort of kind of just give away and then have them do the social media or, or promote our, sta our our box. And then from there, we have a founder's box. Do you want to talk about that? If we have time, uh, we would have a founder's series. Uh, to answer your question, though, we would buy certain items. Um, we're 
it'll be a social entrepreneur effort. Um, it's I was straddling the line between nonprofit and for profit because my whole purpose is is uh, I love Guam and uh, you know the people who are out there. I want to try and minimize the cost of the unit so that way you know they don't have to pay a whole lot and you know it pretty much pays for itself. It's self sustaining. So we we really tried to crunch numbers. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of time, but. <coughs> Uh, I see your concern. We have, we are addressing it. Um, we kind of just came up with the idea, or not came up, but we have where we want to be. It's just difficult to convey. But it would be a social uh, entrepreneur effort where we would collaborate with local businesses, buy things at wholesale for maybe that month alone. Like we're not going to buy this product for every month, like because every month is going to be different. But we will like just try and buy it for wholesale. Uh, and you know maybe do a repeat of that unit until we've exhausted that resource, and then we'll acquire another one. And hopefully by the time it's reached the state of maturity, uh, the whole island is behind it. You have you'll have local clothing retailers who are giving us exclusive items, like you know hat companies or shirt companies, you know well-known companies. <laughs> Serial bar, and we are the serial killers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so validation, we cereals is a comfort food, and we will meet the basic needs of human nature to have that feeling of being loved, or to lessen the pain of, or to lessen the pain of life, of existence. Uh, our market is going to be tourists. So we're going to be uh, located in Tumon. And in order to meet our, our goals, we're going to need to capture 4% of that 1.4 million tourists that we bring in every year. And of course, that number is going to be going up. Uh, we did a survey, and we found out that our customers are going to be based off of the uh, majority of them will be females. And then there are going to be uh, couples with kids in between the age range of 26 and 30 years old. Okay, the concept. Uh, what we're going to be doing is, of course, we're going to be selling cereals, but mainly we're going to be selling the experience. Um, just for All that. Right. Okay, so the experience. This is the concept is a cereal bar. You walk in, you choose your cereals, you do your toppings and everything like that, and the whole concept is the experience. How many of you like to eat cereal? What are you gonna do when you eat cereal? You come in, you can wear your pajamas, you can come in and study, you can come in with somebody who's wearing a really nice pair of pajamas <laughs> and buy them a bowl of cereal. And we also are looking at sustainability as well. So the various products that we could have are personalized items, which is gonna be the biggest part of the cereal ex uh, experience. Of course, cereal isn't just gonna sell itself, so we have to, you know, kind of increase the return of the customer. So having themes, having um, one of our concepts was a collapsible cereal bowl with a lid. You can come back, bring it in, and you actually get a discount for that. Therefore, it lessens our, you know, costs as far as bowls and, you know, other things that might be, you know, an overhead for us. And it's a reward also for the customer, a value added, you know, type of thing. These are our cereals, and the concept is you can have it any way you want. And also, we don't discriminate. So if you have problems <laughs> with the way your cereal comes out, you can do this. We're not going to judge you. We also have different flavors. We got the really sweet, the really healthy, and the super healthy, you know, the ones that got to eat oatmeal. We even have a cure for that. 
We're local going global, right? So we want to be able to share our culture with cereal. How are we going to do that? We're going to actually have to brand. We're going to make a brand, create a cereal bowl that would be, you know, just Guam. You know, it's going to have a Guam logo on it. We can do spoons. We can do cups for cereal, all these different kinds of things. Of course, that is going to be part of our cost. The cereal would pay for a lot of this because of course you're gonna add like, you buy our collapsible bowl for like eight bucks, 10 bucks, you get free cereal with it. Whereas if you just come in, you're gonna pay just like how you go into yogurt land, you pay for the cup by the weight, so you're gonna pay for your cereal. Our cereal is actually gonna start at 750. But six ounces of cereal, it doesn't sound like a lot till you actually have it in front of you, it's a lot. Even oatmeal, oatmeal is a lot of six ounces. And he's gonna tell you how we're gonna make more money. <laughs> okay, so our annual expenses is about uh, 200000 um, And that's majority of it is going to be labor and then, of course, rent. Uh, next slide. So in order to start up, we're going to need 120000 That's for three months of operation. Um, that includes the renovation, the advertisement, the uh, rent, and licensing. Uh, but we're projecting, if we can capture that 4%, we're projecting an income of $741,000. Uh, 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 200 k would be for operation costs. Uh, the cost of goods or the cost of sale would be 323. Uh, the startup cost over five years would be 27. Taxes, and then we're expecting a profit of 150 or 146. Okay, the steps to success. I think uh, one of the major roadblocks that we're going to have is having the tourists come in the door. So. We're going to take advantage of social media and <coughs> advertisement. <laughs> Questions? Serial right. killers. I think you. I think your uh, revenue projections are really too aggressive. I think for a startup, um, you know, I don't know whether you've done uh, research on what tourists really, really like in terms of breakfast, but I know if you are Japanese, they like the soup and the rice and all that. So I, I think you're setting yourselves too high of a aggressive revenue in the beginning and maybe start off a little bit slower. Um, are you thinking of this as like a 24 hours, seven days a week kind of thing, or uh, is it just uh, uh, in the morning? Uh, not not just the mornings, but the, at the same time, we're not 24 hours, and it will be seven days a week. And we're thinking 6 p.m. Uh, 6 a.m. to uh, 10 p.m. Uh, that would be our hours of operation. And of course, if we see that you know during this time there's no there's no customers, then we will make adjustments and we can cut back mm -hmm. on our labor costs. I'm wondering why you're focused on on, on tourists as opposed to local, because I think it's more a product that would appeal to American, you know. Western, as opposed to um, Asian Asian tourists, <coughs> and are you looking at that because that's that's the scale, the volume you need in sales? Uh, to be honest, originally I was focusing on the Minida because there's over eight thousand plus students in this area, but um, Minida is very seasonal, and people don't go to Minida to eat cereal; they only come here to go to school. So that that would make us like a, a second second thought. But if we were in Tumon, and we took advantage of the high traffic, and we were able to capture that four percent. I think that this would be a very successful idea. But th I think that goes back to um, Lou's question: uh, Have you done the uh, market research, and uh, was this something that appealed to them? Or take a look at the uh, cracked egg or eggs and things. Tourists love breakfast. They w they come to Guam for the American experience. They don't come here to eat another round bowl. They can do that in <laughs> so we're we're selling the experience of American breakfast. So we have thought about locals. So we would do things for locals. We would theme, like my ball Monday, bring in your own ball, you get a discount. Mm -hmm. We would probably even go more to the adult, you know, side of it, where we might have like satin and silk Sundays. We will offer you, come in your PJs, you know, the silk boxers, 
And we'll offer you mimosas, maybe waffles, orange juice, you know, and cereal. And have like <coughs> a, a party. On slow times, we might be able, like summer, we might be able to offer, you know, like kids come in, have a pajama party with cereal and things like that. So, you know, making those adjustments, just seeing how the trends are going, who's coming through, that is gonna be part of our, you know, continual research, continual adjustments to our business. Thank you, Serial Killers.
put that geo filter at the bottom that says beauty bar and people will know exactly where you went to go get that look. Okay, our competition, matte, like we said. I'm not a matte girl, so I don't really like matte. And so we have that problem. Girls like two things. Girls like, girls like certain things that are sold at Sephora. And then I have a Sephora girl. And DF, DFS, by the time you get all of those products, you're tired. You've been there for five hours going to three different registers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, please. Okay, so the beauty industry needs us. I asked, you know, why don't you guys take advantage of the beauty market here? There's, there is none. So, next. And this is me. So, I am Brittany, uh, a YouTuber and beauty influencer, makeup enthusiast with a BS in um, communication with an uh, emphasis in public relations and pursuing my MBA in supply chain management. And that is the beauty bar. We're doing the beauty gallery. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that I think, uh, you know, makeup and beauty industry is in the billions. So I think you are in the right direction. Um, I think women do like to have a central place where they can get all their products. And I like that you are focusing in also the millennials, which is the growest, the, the fastest growest po growing population in our, in our economy here. Uh, you're using online uh, services plus also brick and mortar, which is, I think, good for diversification. Um, I wish you luck. Thank you. And we'll lend you the $68,000. <laughs> I think the marketing side of, uh, of your ideas is uh, pretty solid. I'm just a little confused still. Uh, regarding uh, the, the activation of the app versus the, the store. You started out by talking about uh, daily application or, or solving the problem of daily application yet. Uh, so I thought that's where we were going with the app, being a tutorial or some kind of solution for that that would charge. But then it was just an appointment guide to, to send you down to GTO. And, and is that expected that your customer base will then go to GTO daily or are we missing uh, what we're trying to solve, just trying to connect the two? I'm sorry, yes. Um, so we will have a link to our YouTube so you can watch those, those beauty tutorials. So you will have the opportunity to get a list. So say, for example, if you take a picture of something you found on Pinterest, we can kind of work with our consultants to send you a list of the products that we use in our store. For free or is that for a subscription? Free. Okay, yes. so just, just to build loyalty and then mm -hmm. get more visitors to it. Yes, because I think that if Pinterest was a store, would you guys go? Yes. yes. <laughs> I just wanted to add before my time's up <laughs> that yeah. if you see the uh, movement of a lot of the giant retailers now, like Macy's, yes. they rehabilitated their makeup division, which is bigger than you, yeah. and they kind of spouse up their areas to attract <coughs> women to write their publicly to get their stuff fixed and their face yeah. ready. Just to <laughs> <get> their <laughs> stuff But I know you're on the right track because. They're, they're trying to attract that market for the product line. Mm -hmm. So if you diversify MAC or other stuff, yes. so when they come in and they, they choose MAC or Sephora or whatever the product, mm -hmm. I think that's where your cash flow is going to come in. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. And just really quick, I, I know how much my wife and my kids spend on makeup, so if you're going to give me 68, I'll give you half. <laughs> <laughs> Derek and Lou, that, that's on the internet now, so that's legally binding. <laughs> <laughs> Contracts forthcoming. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is JP, and this is my partner, Cordell Robinson. We would like to present you today with Just Move Academy. This is an indoor trampoline park that we would like to bring to you more. The mission statement is to promote health and wellness in a fun new way. The problem is long legs, family, oh. family friendly fun fit facilities. <laughs> <laughs> um, the solution is Just Move Academy. 
Uh, we want to provide a place where people can go have fun and get fit while they're doing it. Okay, fun numbers for you, and this is very important. Population of Guam is around 161,000. About half of that is children. Uh, the location that we're looking at right now is actually SM. We really like that. SM. SM. Yes. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, so for those of you who aren't familiar what a trampoline park looks like, this is an example. Um, this is how everything is set up. You have the entire floor covered with trampolines, you have foam pits, obstacles, and things like that. Um, our way that we're spreading word, contacting new customers, and things like that, on Guam, it's really easy to do word of mouth. Everybody talks, one person likes it, everybody goes. Um, so this is a diagram to show you our competition. Um, it, competition is kind of difficult to define because we would like to partner with local fitness organizations, uh, CrossFit and stuff like that, to bring them into the facility. Um, local residents will be the primary focus because they're the most stable and sustainable. Uh, tourists, there's a lot of tourists, but we can't rely on them. There's peaks and there's drops. Um, the cost that we will look at for advertising is around 30000 Startup cost. Uh, wow. <laughs> it is a lot to start one of these, but the payout in the end is well worth it. So you're looking at a startup cost of $1.1 million. Um, about half of that is the equipment. That's the trampolines, all the obstacles, everything. Um, the average annual revenue, we actually figured this out for Guam specifically, $2 million. This is our team. <laughs> um, for the future, um, we're looking to expand. We want to start either making micro facilities around Guam or going to other places in the Pacific. Um, in the very near future, we'll actually be attending this uh, health expo um, that my partner is running um, to spread the word of fitness and health and well-being. <sighs> okay, so as you guys have seen, there's a lot of obstacle courses here. The races, conquer, uh, trench water, things like that. Um, it's a growing trend. Mm -hmm. These kind of parks have been tested over the past 10 years. Now they're incorporating these types of obstacles and things like that so people can come into these and train. And that is pretty much it. Do you guys have any questions? <laughs>
I know that uh, medical saying that our young kids nowadays are with all this fast food and all that mm -hmm. are need to focus on this and this is a fun way to get them active and get healthy. Absolutely. So I wanted to do a task model, maybe we could look at the insurance industry, just like the way they subsidize the uh, the uh, gymnasiums here or the, the paradise and all that. See if this will fit for that model because it's a lot of mm -hmm. young adults. And if it does, that's one other cash flow other than your fee, fifteen dollars or twenty five dollars a day. Mm -hmm. So these would be membership fee uh, subordinated by uh, in insurance company. Uh, that's actually you just reminded me of something. So this part, it's not just for kids. It's not for fitness facilities. It's for <coughs> everybody. So there's so much of a broad expansion that you can do with these kind of things. You can do uh, corporate programs and then you can do fitness programs. You can do uh, betterment programs like uh, elderly programs. So people who are having trouble moving around or want to get together and bond and uh, build with each other, that's what this is for. I, I've been to one of those parks in Las Vegas and it's really utilized by all walks of life. Yes. Hey guys, my name is Randy the Hewitt, and we made an app. It's called Let's Go, and it's the one-stop event spot. This is my, this is Kat. Hi, I'm Pastor Rita Stroh. Yeah. So, um, our mission is to improve local community involvement in Guam by providing the one-stop event spot. So, our vision is to provide a platform and tool that uses a social network to unify unify community involvement and human interaction. And so what our product features is an app and a website which has event listing and registration, photo sharing, point system, rewards, calendar, and a user profile. So let me go ahead and demonstrate, demonstrate the app to you guys for a little bit. So this is an application that we, that we made already and this is a mobile phone. And all you gotta do is click the app, download of course, and you can sign in. You can you can check my username, my name is John Doe. Sign in again. <laughs> right, look at this. This is the event that's that's currently going on. Check community. And look, the start of weekend three. Woo! Woo! Yeah. All right. Then we go there and then you can get ten points just to attend it. So this is the location, ten points, and you, you can take a picture at the location and you can get points to validate if you're validate if you're there. And if you go back You can show advanced features like the calendar, right? Advanced features like such as your profile, and you have a QR code that that can you know you can be identified uniquely when you go to this event. You can go event scores, you're accumulated points over time, and you can go to your your library of albums, pictures, and that's about it. And this is our website. You can go and download the app, the event, what we do, who we are, and rewards. So we move on to the problem. Why do we make this app? Because basically right now there's no unified listing for events on Guam. Nothing, nothing too unified for, for people to mm. expand it. And there are our, our biased advertisements. Okay, so next I'm going to talk about our goals. So in our first year, we want to create brand awareness and get a customer base. We also want to build corporate relationship and of course launch our product. And for our year two, we're going to um, add more features as well as expand our target audience to include tourists. And on year three, we're going to have even more features of advanced technological features. So, so our marketing plan. So we're going to position our company as a trendy lifestyle brand. So we're going to do this through brand ambassadors, social media, and an alternate reality game. So through our market research, we found out there are over five 500 events on Guam, and um, companies are always looking for ways to promote these events, and they're willing to spend a lot of money. 
We also found out that 70% of our target audience, which is between ages 18 to 35, are willing to download an app that has all these features. So we want to go on to the, the fun stuff, the financials. How are we valued? So basically our, our starting capital will be $51,250 with the itemized versions of needs wages, uh, licenses, startup costs, and working capital, cash on it. So next we move on to our units uh, sold per year. We are very, very conservative. There's about 400 or 500 plus events on Guam that are hosted, but as you can see, this accumulates only up to 30%. If you were to sum all these up, it's about 150. These are, the, these are the packages that <coughs> users can sign up with us with. There's a bronze, silver, gold, and challenges. $300, uh, $1,500, $2,500, and $300. And now we move on to the expenses. So our total expenses, as you can see, is monthly uh, $5,751, and so on. And this is a break-even analysis. Based on uh, what we're going to do, because we're going to, uh, before we even do anything, we're going to do some uh, heavy marketing first before we launch, launch the program. And with that, we'll be able to uh, uh, gather a following and people can invest in us. And it just takes us about 2.17% of the revenue uh, uh, and, and of cost just to break even. And these are our team members. That's me, that's Kat, that's Jose, that's Steven, and that's Vanya. So they, we all made it happen. Thank you. Uh, 